You are listening to the I Am KP podcast. Yeah, talk to Danny Began Trust as everyone knows yourself, Laura Hope. Well, I'm sure they know me better than I know myself. I don't know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and welcome to my new studio. Is this, I think this is the first time you've been here. <laughs> Other than living here, but <laughs> secretly. No, you don't live here. No, I don't live here. Yeah, you're like a studio elf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can summon me by blowing out a candle and saying my name three times backwards. How do you? Yeah, okay. What's that from? I don't know. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> my brain <laughs> is it like Candyman, but you don't say it backwards i'm not sure you remember, have you seen Candyman? yes oh. i was much young for it and it scared the bejesus it was me. very frightening it was i think yeah. it was one of the, the most frightening movies that i watched from when i was younger yeah i don't think i could even keep watching it sorry yeah you don't have to right. be like super in it thank you for adjusting just be normal <laughs> oh why start now <laughs> um Cool. So yeah, yeah, it really, really scared me, and I think I had to turn it off. <laughs> also, we have beers. Yes, we do. So we're tasting this for the first time. So it's supposedly based off a traditional Mexican pineapple alcoholic drink, and it's a wild beer. And it's a wild beer. One of like my favorites. Drink wildly different. Drink wildly different. Uh, how would you do that? Would you like drink it upside down? Pour or? it up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Scream the whole time. Or is there another beer called Wildly Ooh. Different? That's nice. That's tasty. They just seem mm. to be so good, like, out the ball, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the thing with them is knowing, it's kind of like with natural wine, knowing how weird it's going to be, because some of them are pretty conventional and some of them are very, very different, and it's hard to tell. I thought um, wild beer would start becoming like... um. Like Brewdog, because they've got the the branding. Yeah. They've got cool bottles. They've got like a sort of edge as well. It's kind of yeah. sort of Japanese and it's got like a stag's antlers. So it's very mm-hmm. British at the same time. So I thought they would maybe like sort of take over, but they're just in the same just place, doing I guess. Their thing. I think they're yeah. busy making beer. Yeah. Um, good fucking beer. Good beer. Though. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Mazel tov. Cheers. Tof and all that. Lachem. Actually, since you bring that up, did you... <laughs> <laughs> since I bring... Up, yeah, the Jewish language. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I heard on the radio this morning, there's been like a state of emergency declared. Not a state of emergency, but New York's calling uh, an emergency in Brooklyn because of a measles outbreak. Really? Yeah. Um, For th- God's sake. I think, I think they think it's... Uh, um, I think it's... Uh, Someone's oh sorry, I'm getting um distracted by one of the news stories about it that says it's fake news. Oh. Measles outbreak, how fake news is fueling US health emergency. Unless they mean that fake news about vaccines yeah. causing autism, okay. a little autism. Autism. <laughs> it makes your children into automatons. I think you sound like you have autism. I do have autism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very optimistic. <laughs> um, oh, we're um, off to a good start. Everyone can speak. <laughs> Don't die either. That's measles or the black. <coughs> that's the black lung. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. Listen to the black lung. I do have a small touch of the black lung. <laughs> um. So yes, uh, they think it's due to one. Obviously, the people that don't believe in vaccines. Mm-hmm. And one of those is part of the fake news, and the other is to do with um. Brooklyn has a high number of Jewish, uh, like a big Jewish community. Yeah. And they are one of the communities that don't believe in um, vaccines. So like po- Orthodox Jews? Yes. Or like, oh, okay. Supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. Well, it seems to be something that comes with more fundamental arms <laughs> of conventional religions. If you think of like Jehovah's Witnesses and stuff as well in terms of not being able to get blood transfusions. Mm-hmm. I think that's them. It's a very strange one. Yeah. I, had I mean... A, I had a... F- like, my, it was a family friend. Uh, um, she was the same age as my dad and my mom at the time. And... um she'd looked after me when I was grown up Mm -hmm. and then when I got older I I learned that she was a Jehovah's Witness and her her husband and her kid Mm -hmm. didn't follow down that path either so she's basically I remember her having a conversation with my dad and she was trying to bring him on board with what they were saying like there's questions about the Bible you know we don't really know when Jesus was born 
uh, and that was the first time I was like, oh, like, oh, this is like, sorry, if you can hear the music outside in a car, it's that time of the day when everyone's going home and, and we don't have double, well, we have double glazing. But we have a slightly wonky window yes, in so the, the studio the sound, of all places. <laughs> the very place you don't want. Yeah, exactly. Side. If that was in the bathroom, we wouldn't <laughs> notice. But. but it was the first time that, one of the first times coupled with an experience at school that I felt that people, other people had different views on religion yeah, that's interesting. Because it wasn't my high school wasn't very multicultural, right? Yeah, not high school like primary school. Yeah, I mean, I, I hadn't seen like a black kid or anything along those lines when I was in pr- uh, primary school. Yeah, I think elementary school. Elementary to you. school, my dear Watson. <laughs> um, my elementary slash that's primary school. It was like it's good, really it? good. Yeah, I really like that. It tastes really like. Yeasty and berry, but it has the nice sweetness from the pineapple. If anything, I'm a fan. <laughs> loves saying something. It's uh, <laughs> it's very yeasty. It's fair. I love talking about yeast. Can never stop me talking about yeast. Um, yeah, because I went to like yeast. You a forget. relatively for Toronto, pretty homogenous in terms of white neighborhood, um, elementary or primary school. But we really learned about like there was always one kid in the class who was whatever. Yeah. Um. So we learned a lot about different you like holidays. One, were you the one retarded kid? In school? Yes. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. No. <laughs> Not very good at math. <laughs> Not very good at math. They didn't even bother trying to teach me math until I went to high school. <laughs> so they're just like, well. Um. But yeah. So there was like I was aware of different cultures and that they did different stuff mm-hmm. from when I was aware of like white people culture stuff. Like at the same time or like. Like, I, I don't remember learning that later. I remember that learning that while I was learning mm. everything else. Yeah. Like, while you're just learning personing, that's part of it as well. So you don't notice that, you know that it's different, but it's not secondary, yeah. if you know what I mean. Like, it would be like, there'd be more kids at my school that did Hanukkah than Diwali or something, but you'd still... How do you do Hanukkah? <laughs> um, well, it takes longer. <laughs> I remember being, like, jealous of Jewish kids because they got presents for more days than... Like Christmas, Christmas kids, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you only well, get one a day. So. To to bring it on to the Jehovah's Witness side of it, mm-hmm. my, the the family friend, um, she's basically like an auntie, you know. That's yeah. that type of family friend. Everyone's mm-hmm. got one, you know. Yeah, uh, I love and those. she nice. obviously Jehovah's Witnesses are notoriously don't believe in celebrating birthdays or Christmas. Yeah, but I would always get like a card three days before christmas Aww. and three days before my birthday that's really sweet and it was never Aww. directed towards anything it was just yeah. like hey there this is a card have a good day today i think that's really <laughs> sweet because it's like the intention the intents there though that's the thing like, yeah no i'm not trying to discredit her yeah i'm trying to say it's just nonsense that these things are sort of built into um Jehovah, the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, what is a Jehovah's Witness? Is that the religion? Yeah. It's such a weird one to say. It, it is, sounds yeah. like people, like a group of people, as but opposed you are, to religion. But you are a Jehovah's Witness if you we all are. are part of Jehovah's <laughs> Witnessism or whatever. Because Jehovah's think. God, isn't it? Jehovah. Oh, God. I think so. Yeah. I can't remember. I think it's the um, Jehovah. It's the, Isn't. How do you even. It's J. I don't know. Um, Jehovah <laughs> is a Latinization of the Hebrew of vo- uh, one vocalization of the. Oh, oh I'm going to struggle with this one. Te- uh oh. Tetragrammaton, the proper name of God of Israel. Oh, okay. So it's the Hebrew word for uh, God. Cool. Um, and it's one of the polite ones you're allowed to say. Mm-hmm. One of the seven names of God in Judaism. Cool. What other ones does he have? Dishbag. Yahweh. Yahweh is one of them, right? <laughs> Yahweh. <laughs> this Dishbag. is going to get someone's going <laughs> to. Not real. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, um, yeah. Anyway. It's yeah, funny, I think it's it's like funny like how to... all those things come from Judaism. Mm-hmm. You know, just people don't like Jews in general, just, you know. And that's an interesting statement. <laughs> well, they killed, like, how many... I know what you mean, I'm not it saying it sounds like now people just generally I'm not saying that's that a reflection don't. of people who are Jewish. No. I'm just saying, that on, on the whole... they've had a hard time. Yeah, they've had a hard yeah. time, you know. Um, <laughs> it was just the way you said it. Uh, 
um, <laughs> bloody jizz. Like I wish you could sense this. Um, but everything that is, uh, especially in relation to religion, modern yeah. Abrahamic religions, they're ev- all part of it stems from the, the Hebrew Bible. Yeah, there's no getting around it. No. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I wonder if that's sort of like rebelling against your parents, like doing the opposite <laughs> stuff from your parents. Of course parents. it is. Yeah. Like, like even, I made up my own God. My God's not like your God. Even, yeah. Ju- even Jesus couldn't stand his Hebrew dad. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta call you Jehovah now. <laughs> What's your name again? <laughs> um, but anyway, I think it's sweet in the dad. case of your fake auntie that it was like she was sticking to her beliefs, but she was acknowledging that your beliefs weren't her yeah. beliefs and that you're, especially as a kid, you're not going to understand. Mm. So it's like a concession. I think that's quite nice. Yeah. And I think, I don't know how people get to these points where they start following these type of religions, but it doesn't affect really how you are on on the whole and how you interact in your day-to-day life. Like, she's still doing those things. She's still being an amazing person. She's one of the nicest people I know. And it was nothing to do with her becoming a Jehovah Witness, you know? Yeah, it's a way, like, it's, I mean, to a certain extent, outside of, core beliefs like i do or don't believe in a god and i do believe he wants this or that for me religions need to be mostly rules about things you can't do but we all have those in our lives as well whether they're like diets or like no tv in bed or (laughs) get vaccinated (laughs) like everybody has stuff as well so it might seem kind of alien but when you think about it it's not actually that different oh shit uh-huh. Just scouting while you're talking there. Yeah. Uh, there's a list on Christianity.com. Yeah. Uh, obviously. <laughs> Christianity.com. <laughs> Your one-stop shop for all things Christianity. Who is that to me? <laughs> Jesus. Is it God? It's God. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, <laughs> he outsources from the Jews and the, you know, that run the the world. Internet. Yeah. <laughs> Gets them to do all of his back back stuff and his and his website. All his renewals and Yeah. The GoDaddy stuff and all that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ten things everyone should know about the, uh, Jehovah Witnesses and their beliefs. I wonder what angle it's coming from because it's Christianity.com. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, like that could go into, it's like, they believe it, that you're a butt. Stuff. Or it could just be straight <laughs> up. Like, <laughs> that's really funny. Uh, 1870, Charles Taze Russell started leading Bible studies in Pittsburgh. The Jehovah Witnesses movement came out of the bible student movement hmm. bloody students changing everything <laughs> getting radically not <laughs> radical in the uh... uh number two they got their name uh because it's from god and that was their focus as we now know Can, they don't like the whole um church the jesus thing ah uh... because <laughs> they don't think he was like they think he was maybe a prophet at best okay. but they don't think he was the son of god i think Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you remember the book that you get from them, The Watchtower? Yes. That's so weird. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't they believe in blood transfusions? I feel like it's going to be something from the book Not of believe. Leviticus. Like, because they but do happen. Like, them? why yeah. can't you have one? <laughs> it's different. Yeah. I feel like that's going to be some sort of weird purity law thing, but okay, Jehovah, I don't know. I think, uh, let's see. Blood first thing that comes up when i put in bl <laughs> blood you order a lot of blood off the internet are you so straight from the massive wikipedia hole itself and mm-hmm. uh, jehovah witnesses believe that the bible the bible the bible prohibits ingesting blood and that christians should not accept blood transfusions or donate or store their own blood for transfusion the oh belief- so you can't even get around yeah. it you can't no. even like no you just die oh. Uh, the belief is based on an interpretation of scripture that differs from that of other Christian denominations. Okay, cool. So there's like a certain thing that's read. Yeah. That's and crazy. Just really, right? really thorough and literal. David, Good job. David Thoreau. <laughs> Henry David Thoreau. Mm. Um, yeah, because that kind of leads on to the denial of like, um, what are they called? Vaccines. Like yeah. not vaccinating your kid. Imagine your kid needed um, a, a blood transfusion for some reason. Yeah. And then just because of your religion, like that's something that you, you subscribe to. So you have to go with it. Yeah. And, and your kid's going to die. Yeah. Because they're not usually, it's not usually like, 
it's not even really a roll of the dice the way vaccines are. No. It's like usually you're not suggested to get a blood transfusion unless you really, really need one or you're going to die. <laughs> so it's not even Some like you do have fun. to actually make that choice. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, actually, we're going to get on to... Um, Dirty blood. <laughs> to, well, to EPO, but yeah, well, that retransfusing was, blood is another... Well, that's a good like segue cheat. into that because, yeah. um, well, uh, the Bantamweight uh, former champion, mm-hmm. T.J. Dillashaw, my friend and everyone else's, the snake, as he's called... <laughs> Why he's called the snake? No, why? Conor McGregor gave him that nickname. Did he? <laughs> is it like the emoji snake? Does he think he's not a nice guy, or like is it a compliment? <laughs> Basically, when Conor was at the top of his shit talking game, yeah, <laughs> uh, he was doing the Ultimate Fighter, which is a TV series for the UFC. Yeah, so it's like a feeder sort of competition where they they have like um. I can't remember how many people that are in it, but they basically fight every week to get a mm. contract with the UFC. Okay, so it's like reality TV yeah. UFC. And yeah. he was the the coach, Connor, on one of them. Hmm. No. Was he? I think he was, because it was when he was supposed to fight. Who was he? He was supposed to fight. He was supposed to... I can't remember. I'm getting it completely, totally wrong. But anyway, Connor started calling TJ... Because uh, he was one of the opposing guys on the, on the ah. coaching on the other team, Snake, mm. and I think he was just like making out that he heard some stuff about him. Oh, and that he was like, mm. and this co- bad guy. This coincided with TJ leaving the the team that essentially made him like Team oh, Alpha Male, and okay. he went to go and start his own uh, gym with his striking coach, right, Dwayne Dwayne Bang Ludwig. Is that his Christian name? Yes. <laughs> 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 so that. That was just like people thought Connor was a prophet, but TJ mm. kind of embraced it. He got like snake tattoos on his arm. Yeah, you gotta lean into stuff mm. like that because you can never prove that you're not. <laughs> but anyway, like TJ is an absolute beast, like un- just known for his like ferociousness, tenacity, technical skill, and then that coupled with his <laughs> unfathomable um sort of conditioning which it turns out <laughs> might be kind of fathomable <laughs> so he he flagged for epo mm-hmm. and i'm not even going to attempt to say what that stands for it's do you know how to say it uh erythropoietin yes yes okay something like something that. like that did something along those lines did my best but it uh basically like it does something to your red blood cells, so you're yeah. to, you can take in more oxygen. So it's like a naturally produced hormone in the human body, which yeah does like enhance your red blood yeah. cells. I'm not sure if it's the number of your red blood cells or their effectiveness of the ones you've already got. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, my my interpretation is that it um, puts your your count up. That makes sense because they've had problems with people's blood being too thick thick. when they're. That's what I was thinking. um, Yeah, yeah. That's Um, that's where I'm extrapolating mm -hmm. from. Is that when you told me that? Yeah, so it is probably, and that makes more sense. Anyway, you can't like supercharge them. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm a red blood cell. Yeah, so that's produced by your kidney. So they are used therapeutically. If your kidney is in trouble, like you can get injections of it. Um, But it's also used, yeah, to basically just like juices your blood so you are i think have better endurance and i think better recovery as well um it kind of somewhat simulates uh high altitude training yeah exactly um a lot of people that are in combat sports and all these other people um as well do do training at high altitude to simulate that stress on your body Mm -hmm. so then when you go to perform at sort of sea level yeah your blood's ready for you to be like in the end and you're just like (laughs) Chilling, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I like sleep in like hyperbaric mm-hmm. tents and crazy. Um, you're coming at this from combat sports. I'm coming at it from cycling. Yeah. Um, but it's a very popular one amongst. But then, so TJ was flagged. I think was it last week for it, and then they immediately suspended him just yeah. as sort of precautionary. Mm-hmm. Um, he said that he gave up his title willingly, but they would have they would have taken his yeah, title away yeah. from him regardless <laughs> yeah. of that. That's like. Forcing someone to resign, it's basically. Like him trying to co- control the situation yeah. and his image. Um, so he was fired for EPO. Um, they re- retro tested one of his old yeah. tests. Do they have like B samples from the same test or is it like an older test? No, it's a test from like before Christmas. Oh, okay. And that tested for EPO, which oh, didn't okay. come up at the time because it's a very specific 
um, type of drug. They don't really test for it all the time. Yeah. It's just random, but yeah. it's in amongst other things. and Because uh, that... your body produces that anyway, so it's quite hard yeah. to tell just from a blood test. Um, and I think there's a sort of like, um, it kind of, if it's in your system, it goes away pretty uh, like easily. Yeah, I think so. So you have to get it when it's in there. Yeah. And that you can usually, yeah. Cause I think that's how most of the cycling cheating was done is they would time it mm. so that they weren't in danger of being tested. And that's why they started doing much more like random testing. Like they'll come knock on your door at five in the morning and kind of thing. I think there's something to do with differential of levels between your blood and your urine as right. well that they can use to test for it. But did they not like inject it into their bladder or something like that? Ooh, I haven't heard that one. There's something that they inject. I know it's injected, but I think mm. it just goes in your wherever. Well, this is one of the the things about this whole uh, debacle is T, uh, TJ can't blame it on anything. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not. It's like, not like a tainted supplement. Yeah, it's not like you fucking took a dick pill and it comes up exactly for cocaine. Or it's from steak or something. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's like literally steroid. only one you, way for yeah, it to get into 100%, your system. There's no way around. So it. he's he's pretty much his reputation is tarnished. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, people like uh, John Jones has always been able to get away with um the stuff that he's done. Because he's able to say, well, it was part of, like, tainted, um, yeah. like, chicken or whatever. Yeah, that's happened before in cycling and as well. I've been the... taking boner pills and it was cut with cocaine or something. <laughs> you know, it's bad when you'd rather admit to taking, like, <laughs> really, really dodgy, like... <laughs> boner funny. pills? Yes. Gas station boner pills. Gas station boner pills. Thank you, mm. Brian Redman. <laughs> um, yeah, there's just no getting around it. And... Mm. As I understand it as well, because it was seen that his kind of biggest strength was his endurance. For that to be artificial is I quite mean, like, it's almost more quantifiable. So it's almost worse. How, like, far, how far back can they go with it? You know, um, it's such, it's like trying to, it's trying to take a picture of something when it's like an eye, something getting threaded through an eye of a needle at the precise moment it happens from a telescope on earth yeah when it's on a planet in a different solar <laughs> system like yeah it's a very specific time when it is in your system it stays around for and mm -hmm. when you test for it so there's only like a small bracket window and you have to know where to sort of look as well yeah so it's just amazing that they've been able to sort of catch them with it it is yeah and i wonder if now that they know that this is a thing these guys are doing because yeah. it's the i Makes forget the, the guy who does the drug controls for the ufc the golden the, snitch yeah so he's Jeff worked Novitsky. Yeah, yeah he's worked with cyclists so he's mm. obviously figured out all these windows and stuff like maybe not like him personally but that was part of them combating this in cycling so it'd be interesting i wonder what this sort of the what stops them from just always testing for it is it money is it the test itself or is it just it has to be there's only like a small window that it works for so yeah i think it's it's also at a certain point as much as it's very important you're going to be just really interfering with especially i mean high level athletes mm -hmm. with their ability to train mm -hmm. like to be like these guys aren't training you know especially with cyclists in la like they're going to be in some mad place doing like high altitude shit. What's a like, mad place to you? Um, I'm just trying to, like a lot of them training like Kenya and stuff <laughs> like that. Like it's like you can't, yeah, money financially is probably a big part yeah. of it because you can't assign some one dude to each person mm. and get them to follow them around and like collect their bodily fluids every day. Probably <laughs> lose too much blood as well. Jeez, <laughs> need some of it. <laughs> yeah, it must be the 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 money versus the the technology as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and plus, you know, they've got 600 people on their roster. Yeah. UFC. Yeah. Can't test that all the time with these sort of high end, um, tests and very, yeah. if it's very expensive, it's not going to, it's not going to be any, it's not going to make any sense to do it for the UFC. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They need like a dedicated, like that's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, uh, Even if it's a dollar for it, that's six hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, and if you test it, like let's say you figure out you have to test for EPO every day, yeah. that's gonna cost and, a lot uh, of money. Um, and blood. <laughs> and blood, exactly. Like I don't, I don't. I, I told wonder, you guys, I, I don't have any EPO. I don't have any more blood. Stop <laughs> taking my blood. 
Because you probably got more like, blood to give you. You probably have to take EPO to recover from yeah. how much your blood was exactly. getting taken. <laughs> um, maybe they should just take out everyone's blood and put in new blood to just like <laughs> clean slate. It's not a TV show called New Blood. No, something blood. True Blood. That was it. Yes. Didn't Sexy watch it. Vampires. Didn't watch I started it. watching it and I liked it at the beginning, and then it just got really annoying because you eventually figure out that actually all the protagonists are incredibly annoying and you yes. want them to die. So. Well, I figured that at the start. And didn't watch it. <laughs> you figured it out more quickly than me. <laughs> There's a few really good baddies in it, though. So, um, Nosferatu. No Nosferatu, but there's an Alexander Skarsgård vampire who's delightful. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, today I've been hearing a lot about some guy called Benjamin Button Yahoo. What's the who is this guy? <laughs> Benjamin Netanyahu, possibly. I want to see a comic of Benjamin Button Yahoo. <laughs> oh my god, I actually looked at a headline about this and I was like, we're not going to talk about Israel, it's fine, I won't read it. <laughs> yes, he's like the re-elected, quote unquote, mm. re-elected leader of the free nation that is <laughs> yeah. Israel. That's so funny, I looked at that just before and I was like, yeah, we won't get into that, that's fine, I'll leave that. Well, it's something that I know absolutely nothing about. I can I can't even begin to talk about the actual structure of what's going on in Israel and like yeah. the palace like Palestine and Jews and all this. It's just so convoluted. It is, and I've made like a really conscious effort to learn more about mm. it. And I know we've like asked people yeah. about it, um who yeah. would have better reasons to have opinions. And um, I never get a straight answer. Like I never yeah. there's no side that I think, oh, these guys are the bad guys. No, I don't think it's really I don't know what it's it really is. possible to do that. It's um yeah. I feel bad for that, though. It's like I should know what is going on in Israel. Yeah, it's, um, the thing is that I've never heard of all, like, let's say the things I've read of the podcast I've listened to, everyone has a vested interest in it, um, and it's very hard to get it back to kind of zero and figure out. It's when it's, like, black and white and it's, like, us versus them that that's fine I'm, i can generally take things in but yeah. when there's like third parties and all that i'm just like ah i can't take any of this yeah and, that, and that's the thing as well because it's like there's the actual israel palestine situation and then there's the sort of like proxy yeah. war that other nations are doing within that yeah. um and that becomes really convoluted and then there's all the like is being anti-israeli being anti-semitic yeah. like no but maybe <laughs> like it's it's very complicated. It's, it does seem kind of like that, obviously, is why there hasn't been a solution to it that anybody's been happy with. Yes. Is that once you get, like, actually down to the population, um, it's just, like, two people from opposite sides yeah. are equally, or maybe not equally, even that's going to be <laughs> not the right thing to say, but... At the end of the day, if two people belong in the same home and they're diametrically opposed yeah. to being there, like, what do you do yeah, with yeah. that? Um, and how do you pick a side? Like, there's no appropriate way of picking a side, really. It's so one of these things up, like, that people can just explain to me and explain to me and I just never grasp it. Yeah. I can just never get this sort of way. <sighs> You know, what sides come from where? Well, I think it comes, it so often comes down to like tallying atrocities. It's like, well, we did this bad thing, but they did this really bad thing. And you just can't get out of that. Um, Yeah. I think it's your opinions probably affected by any prejudice, pred, pred, oh God. Prejudice. There you go. (laughs) Prejudice. (laughs) The speaker of the podcast. (laughs) Um, Yeah, because that's the thing as well, as you're not like, so many, there are so many vested interests and then like senses of like loyalty or um, things being fair because another thing in the past was unfair. Or, like yeah. it just, it's impossible <laughs> to get around. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. On a lighter note. Uh, so this week there was a petition to try and get uh, a statue of Ewan McGregor. I did see that. Uh, as Obi-Wan Kenobi mm-hmm. in, uh, in Scotland yeah. to be erected in yeah. Scotland. <laughs> did you just wake up me when he said erected? <laughs> no. It's just a natural reaction. Oh, it's like erected. an accent. It's like a visual <laughs> accent. Erected. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? 
Tell me more. Tongue in there as well. (laughs) (laughs) Anybody who's not watching this is really confused. Um, Anyway. They can visualize. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. And so, yeah, like, it's going to be amazing. I think that'd be, is it, what I haven't seen is how big is it going to be? Because I'd really like, like, a 14 tall, like, really massive one, basically. Like, somewhere really inappropriate would be brilliant. At the top of, you could put it, I don't know, like, at the top of, what's Scotland's tallest building? Probably. <laughs> no. It was built by God. That would be bigger but than Scotland's most of the known building. world then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Scotland. Scotland. I don't know. You but, could put it on top of the Scott Monument. That'd be funny. Yeah. It would be very improbable. Physically. Um, tallest building. Okay. So it's going to be something really sad. It's going to be like 10 stories tall. Glasgow Tower. Yeah. How tall is that? 39 story. Oh. Skyscraper. Is it like one oh, of no, those Oh, no, no. Actually, uh, <laughs> Glasgow Tower, a 39 story skyscraper in Dundee. <laughs> okay. Well, fuck you then, internet. Um, <laughs> that's so stupid. That's so Why would you funny. name something like that, Glasgow Tower? That was obviously named before Google Maps yeah. was invented. Idiots. Um, <laughs> so that, yeah, because they demolished a massive one in Dundee as well. They demolished a lot of massive things in Dundee. Hmm. Like your ego. Um, so, yeah. It was an ambitious development. We'd pump up to $200 million into the Dundee economy and create almost 1,000 permanent jobs brought to the area because of... <laughs> I thought you were talking about the statue. <laughs> because of the... Fl- yeah, probably will. Somebody will have to maintain that. Well, if they're going to make a 39-story tall statue of Hugh McGregor, it's going to take a lot of people. Well, so if the top of the Scotland's tallest building, then it would have to have like a speech bubble saying, Anakin, I have the higher ground. <laughs> Amazing, beautiful genius. Okay, sold. It's pointless. I have that higher ground. Because <laughs> I'm the tallest, tallest building. <laughs> There's no way you could be higher than me. That's wonderful. Yes. Very good idea. They should just have Hugh McGregor as himself. Just up there shouting. I feel like he might get chilly. They'd probably pay him to stay up there so you wouldn't have to make another shit movie. <laughs> What's he made that shit recently? Um. Train Spotting 2. Oh, I haven't watched that yet. T2, T2. which is controversial. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because Terminator 2 was oh, called T2. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Not yeah. Idiots. And it was just a bunch of like old people in a movie about when they used to be young. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Like Not a it. fan? Not it was a fan? okay. It was okay, but it was. <coughs> it was one of those ones where it was like felt like it was going somewhere but in your mind you were like this is going to end like just with nothing really you know there was no possible way at the very end where it was like oh there's this is just not going anywhere yeah. but initially it sound, it feels like that you know it has the same sort of vibe it's the first one you're like how do you recreate that though because it was it feels like it was really an accident the first one mm. um it was genuinely a product of its time yeah exactly and how do you like Maybe they sort of deal with this in the film. I hope they would a little bit. But how do you um, communicate nostalgia for a time that was actually completely shit as yeah. well? Like it, <laughs> you know, like that's what's weird about nostalgia is you look back and stuff and you're like, yeah, it was brilliant when it was actually horrible. Yeah. Um, but, you know, trousers were different or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. It's not worth it. <laughs> hmm. I'll watch it sometime when you're out galloping. Yes, we should have a massive giant statue of yes. um Obi Wan Kenobi. I think that's great. Yeah, it's a very interesting choice. They they have to like I don't know. Maybe they're waiting for him to get slightly older so they can have him play Obi Wan older in one of the movies. But <laughs> oh no, they can't because he dies. <laughs> I'm just imagining that if that were possible, that he has like a mole on his staff who's like, "Stop using moisturizer. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Don't worry about sunscreen. <laughs> drink well, lots of alcohol. Don't drink water. <laughs> get probably." Old. Th- the period in between from when he dies in the first uh, Star Wars mm-hmm. uh, until from the last, was it Revenge of the Sith? Was the last one he was in? I'm already, the timelines are confusing. So the th- uh, what is called the, the third one in yes. the timeline, yeah. what is like, the, th- the th- yeah, but came out in the 2000s. Yes, of the... Sorry, but that's the prequel. rubbish yeah. ones. Prequels. Yeah. Uh, I like the last one. Um, <laughs> it's just wanted to see how he became Darth Vader. Um, yeah. But 
yes, from then till when we see him on uh, the planet with Luke, he could like he could do some stuff in between that. Yes, there's already been the the Clone Wars, so that kind of fills in a little bit of the gaps. But it was and a cartoon, so he would be weirdly older than when he was then younger again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he can't do another prequel. <laughs> can't be a prequel to the prequels. <laughs> Yo, dog, we heard you like prequels. <laughs> <laughs> prequel into the choir <laughs> jeez <laughs> um yes. uh this battle royale island yes. did you see oh, that i did and then i have a whole tangent off no of way that. Um, so there was an article that came out this week within the last couple of days and it was essentially i think i assume a millionaire it's basically, a yeah, yeah. B- a bajillionaire. A chameleonaire. A chameleonaire uh, said that he wanted to create his own battle royale island. Yes. Vis-a-vis, like, the, the battle royale from, when was that? 2000 and, not the game, but the movie. Yeah. Um, when was that? Well, it was a book first, wasn't it? Okay, I'm not. I think it was the book first. Okay. I wonder, what, wonder when the first time the concept of a battle royale was used. That's a good question because I don't think that will have been the first time. Um, Maybe not the the words, but the like the idea must be in some sort of movie, or even a book before then, or even an actual war before then, possibly. Yeah. If we're getting back far enough, um, yeah, because it was like a Japanese. I think it was a Japanese book first, but I could be totally wrong. And then it was a Japanese movie. And... I'm just googling uh, the history of battle royale. Sorry for that. That's okay. Um, um, yeah, it is based on a book, which I have read and have nightmares about to this day. Um, it just keeps coming up with the, the movie Battle Royale. Yeah. So the book was finished in 1996, but published in 1999. Um, okay, so Battle Royale implied a fight that was fit for royalty and thus described large combative... Uh, events. Mm-hmm. It originally was used to describe cock fights, but mm. expanded around the 18th century to include human fights, including fisticuffs. <gasps> fisticuffs! I love some fisticuffs! <laughs> combat between a large number of people and seagoing battles between equally matched armadas. Oh. Uh, within the 19th century, the term began to be used to describe forced combat between slaves in the United States. Shit. Oh, shit. That's dark. Giving it a whole a more negative. Oh thing. boy! Ugh. And then professional wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, but yeah, on an island, this guy wants to create, but he's essentially wanting to recreate the movie. Yeah. Well, I don't think he's Battle using Royale. like ninth graders or whatever they're mm. supposed to be, but he wants a hundred people. That's the thing with that movie. You don't know if there are if they are ninth graders or if they're forty. I think all... it says in the book in words <laughs> I'm joking. for our stupid white brains. <laughs> um, Why do you always have to bring it down to race? I thought you were bringing it down to race. <laughs> no. He's just thinking down to your level. Um, yeah, he wants 100 people. It's going to be airsoft, so they're not literally killing each other. Yeah. Or so he well, says. Someone might die. I wouldn't be surprised if have it just... Ever... <laughs> the article I read on it was like, but remember the fire Festival? Things could get really <laughs> out of hand. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. it could actually get a little Lord of the Fliesy. Yeah, someone was saying if he mixed Fire Festival with Battle Royale. Yeah, you'd pretty much get this. That'd be amazing. It bunch would be of, amazing. Bunch of posh twats trying to kill each other with their soft guns. Oh my god, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh my god, amazing. Wow. Huh. <laughs> you took my corduroys, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> it's basically what... I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all the arguments will be over. I think so, yeah. What do you call those shirts? You know, the ones that gamekeepers wear, the one that's like checkered slightly. You know, the shirts. ones I mean, like they're like just white and uh, white, kind of like off white, and then they're yeah. just like a lines, checkered lines. Just like check shirt, kind of. <laughs> I don't no. know. Is there a specific name for it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's one they all wear. Standard issue. Um, Fake groundskeeper shirt? <laughs> it's not a groundskeeper. Gamekeeper. Gamekeeper. Those things are different. Oh, God. I don't think I even realized those were two different words until just now. Really? Yeah. Groundskeeper. I guess if I thought about it in my head, I would read them different ways, but I've just thought of them as being synonyms. You're a cinnamon. You're a 
Um, like this. Oh, <laughs> sorry, guys, if you're listening, I'm just essentially yeah. showing Laura. A I'm googling uh, <laughs> GameKeeper shirt. Ah. <laughs> and not spilling any water. So that one. See it. Oh yeah. A tatters all shirt. So apparently, this is white with the sort of green check. Oh, your USB is really upset. I know. Oh, yeah. that thing. No, it's fine. It's okay? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's like an umbilical cord at this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> um, yes. Well, it seems to be called a Tattersall shirt, but I don't know. What the hell is a Tattersall shirt? That shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of that word before? Yes, but I didn't know what it meant. Okay. Um... Every once in a while, I actually Google one of these clothing words that I never have known what they meant, and then I know what they are. I just Googled a uh, GameKeeper shirt, and it just came up with a camo shirt. Ah, <laughs> that's the... Um, I, can't, I can't see it, though. That's so, the, the GameKeeper blind. shirt it's in the blind. most dangerous game, which is Hunting Man or whatever. Um, back to Battle Royale. Man on man, man action. Oh! He winked um, at me again. He didn't. <laughs> other, other things in the news this week is Smallville actress Alison Mack. Can I just rewind briefly okay. to the Battle Royale thing? Yeah, so it's a hard one for Scottish people to say, actually. Battle. Battle. Battle Royale. Battle Royale. Oh, yeah, Battle Royale. <laughs> battle. A battle Royale. <laughs> it's quite nice. Don't I like, like it. T's as a Scottish battle. person, which but is you funny because really like <laughs> they have two T's in the middle of Scotland. Yeah, it's Scottish, true. actually. That's just so you can tell who doesn't belong. It's like a password. Okay, if you like Scotland, <laughs> then you know it's not right. Well, actually, um, that was something that was used during the war. Oh, yeah? yeah. The one war? <laughs> I'm joking. The one war. <laughs> um, no, there is instances of if you're not local and from, and if you're a spy and you can't say, like, uh, you know how you get these words, the Ebel town names yeah. that are spelt like really strange. Yeah, that are like obnoxiously unpronounceable. And if you try and say it, it just sounds like everyone looks at you like, what Yeah, the if fuck? you're like, oh, I'm from Featherstone Hall. And, and it's like, like spelt like with a D-H-R-O-S. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that is interesting. It ex would explain a lot of really perverse naming standards, which I associate mostly with England, but a few with Scotland as well. And of course, I am from the infamous Tirana. Yes. You say Toronto. We know uh, you're not one of us. <laughs> Like the guy that was on the horse along with the uh, high hole silver? Tonto? Oh. <laughs> I thought you said that. No, Tirana. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> well, it's subtle. Tronto. So the guy <laughs> who Royale. wanted to do this battle royale, he'd advertised it on a website, which I hadn't heard of before, which is called Hush Hush. And it's basically like gum tree for people with is stupefying amounts of money right okay um oh, and gosh. they sell i went on it and then it stopped <laughs> oh working God. which is quite weird because i feel like it could sense my intention to make fun yeah. of them well it sensed they didn't have any money so i think maybe like that as well you. yeah it was like <laughs> poor people internet. she's on a computer from 2011 she can't buy any of this shit she has a um, phone from before that <laughs> but it's like it's like helicopters and the favorite thing of mine that i saw before it that kicked me off was that they were selling <laughs> bottled oxygen from different oh mountain ranges so like um everest oxygen for like it was like 40 something thousand dollars yeah. they were very sizes apparently and they had like they had like rocky mountain oxygen which How i think was stupid like just climb oxygen the rockies. from a certain place <laughs> you probably don't you sir. probably can you probably you probably just probably an empty can that well, you're just selling for compressed air that's I all it is i wish i had thought of this <laughs> because you know how much it would cost to make that <laughs> yes <laughs> very little money not so much um you have to ship it though yeah you'd still stand to make a good you can send positive 000. vibes yeah definitely from I don't think I can afford to send positive vibes <laughs> to anyone who would buy a can of air from a mountain. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it was amazing. It was very, very upsetting. I was looking for their wine list when it kicked me off. I wanted to see if they were selling, like... It's probably got, like, selling. children's Cheval blood Blanc. from Ethiopia bottles. You could probably buy humans on there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, it was really messed up. I mean, this guy's trying to buy humans on there. He's trying to buy a hundred humans he's on there. Yeah, he's trying so. to, like, round them up on an yeah, island exactly. and then kill them yeah. with airsoft. Yeah. That's just so he doesn't have to put bullet holes in them. Airsoft. <laughs> just, like, put plastic babies in them. They're not yeah. going to, like, corrode or whatever. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's an amazing website. If anyone would like to check it hush, out, hush, 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 hush. But you have to have to earn over like a million a day. 
Which apparently, it doesn't formally say that, but it certainly stopped working quite quickly. Which <laughs> That's why it's funny. called Hush Hush. They exactly. don't talk about it. It's like yeah. Fight Club for mm-hmm. posh mm-hmm. people. For, yeah. Well, Fight Club. Some of Fight Club is for <laughs> some posh people. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So that was my side note. If anyone wants some entertaining reading and maybe is on a newer computer than I am. Hmm. But I wonder what the format is like. Do you go there? And it, it sounds like it would just essentially be an airsoft island. Yeah. Just what they're doing is. Yeah, like it, but I think I think it's kind of a generic difference wherein you're not doing it for your amusement; you're doing it for a crazy millionaire's amusement. Right. <laughs> um, I think that's the main difference. I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> Me neither. It would be an experience. <laughs> um. Yeah. So before this all kicked off into the battle royale realm, you do uh, have a hard time saying that. What it sounded a lot battle. like battle royale. I sound like I'm really like I sound like I'm Ewan McGregor if I say battle. <laughs> battle royale. I do have to make a face when you say it, which is cool. You did a little battle forelock toss. Yeah, good. Forelock. Yeah. I don't have any forelocks. A little bit. <laughs> Only the one, not four. Forelock and love. <laughs> anyway. Yes, yeah, small, uh, Smallville. Remember how? Yes. She was part of this sex cult. Yes. Um, and she recruited Kirsten Crick. She tried to recruit. Yeah. I That's think a hard. She, did. she <laughs> tried to recruit. Cursed and crook. That's a really hard name to say. Um, I think she did. Maybe like a little but bit. But she says she wasn't involved in the sex stuff. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason you recruit Cursed and Crook. Yeah, take- she'd be like, I only want to do the boring bits. <laughs> I don't want to do. Yeah. Um, so she was uh, pleads guilty to racketeering. I'm not that sure what racketeering is. I'm not going to lie. It's a great word. Racketeering. <laughs> That's what she pled guilty to. <laughs> Even admitting you don't understand Israel and Palestine. I'm going to admit I don't really know what racketeering is. It um, sounds fantastic. I think it's one of those like general terms that can cover a few things. Yeah, it sounds like it's like, um, I don't know, but it sounds like thefty. Is it thefty? A bit thefty? I think it's like doing something at someone's expense. Uh, racketeering uh, definition. Def. Deutsch. <laughs> uh, dishonest and fraudulent business dealings. Ah. Yes. So pretty much what we were both saying. Okay. Well, it's, More it's what you saying. <laughs> you got the dishonesty and I got the business. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like real life as well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know who that is worse for. <laughs> <laughs> You're all business. I'm all business. Dishonest. And you're all party. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Mm. Huh. So yeah. are they not... They must have just figured out that that's what they can charge her with as opposed to yeah. being a culty sex pest, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, I wonder if it's in relation to the the cult, though. I think it is, yeah. Would it be just maybe like you got her on a separate thing? I mean, mm. maybe, but I think it's most likely... Because you you know how they headline these things, and then it would be like clickbait. Yeah, it's actually ready. like parking tickets or it's something. Name Alison Mack. Yes. Hmm. Was Alison definition? <laughs> A racketeer. Oh, the key. The Mac. Ye- yes. Um. Uh, okay. Pleads guilty. Yeah, in mm-hmm. sex cult case. God, she's so thin now. She must have just like lost so much weight from the whole thing. Well, that was supposedly part of the cult as well. Was like depriving people of food because apparently the founder was super into skinny ladies. So part of it was about like abstaining from food. Yeah, which is is she still in the cult though? Oh, uh, I mean, it's hard to get out of a cult. She could be still doing the stuff, or she could be really stressed out. That's how you get. That's how you get out of a cult. I guess so. (laughs) It's also how you put some weight back on. I think. (laughs) As much as it's stressful, I think the food's pretty stodgy. All that prison food. (laughs) So much winking this episode. (laughs) (laughs) That's the name of this episode. (laughs) Bloody winkers. Bloody winkers. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I wonder if she made a deal, like they weren't going to charge her with anything crazier than that, if she pled guilty to it or something. I mean, why is the other guy not gone to jail? Or has he? The, I don't know. The dude, oh yeah, I think he's in has jail. He? Keith uh, uh, Rannery. Oh, oh no, I yeah. thought he was in prison garb, but it's actually his dumb sweater. So. 
<laughs> yeah, he's a slave Fantastic. and master, slave and master system. So weird. Not the not the game system, but the ma- ma- slave and master system. You'd think you'd see that on the tin and be like, "That's not for me," but so she appeared in a Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn federal court. Mac pleaded guilty to racketeering and racketeering conspiracy charges related to the suspected cult. Uh, how do you even say it? Nexium. 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 The artist formerly known as Nexium. 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 Ah, uh, yes. Cool. Oh, it's Nexium. But they spell it really annoying, don't they? So start, yeah, with an X and the N-X-I-V-M. Isn't there, a, like, a pharmaceutical product called Nexium? Something like that? Probably. I feel like there is. It's not like Xanax or whatever. Yeah, Xanaxium. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's just, like, I don't know. Like, it's such a weird one, especially someone who's a, a celebrity. Yeah. Who's had success to be in something that's sort of just like clearly wrong. Like there's no yeah. there's no right about it. I mean, if you measure it from people who you'd think would be vulnerable to stuff like that, you wouldn't think of celebrity, but then you think of Scientology and then it kind of makes more sense in light yeah. of that. It's just like an even worse to Scientology, basically. Worser. Way worse. Mm-hmm. And without the benefit as with Scientology, of people already knowing what it was. Mm. Um, it's just like, sounds cool. And yeah. then, yeah. But it came from, it's like a 1998 self-help program. Yeah. That's where it stemmed from. Mm-hmm. But like, I hadn't heard how of it. it. But how does it spiral out from there? I mean, if he started yeah. it, and it originally started as uh, a self-help group, mm-hmm. then I can see how he maybe just like shoved it in the way of, a cult like oh yeah you know what really helps you with self-help blow, yeah. blow jobs yeah and a for me. five a day yeah <laughs> um to me i wonder if maybe it was like a chicken and egg thing where he earnestly meant it as why a would you self- bring a chicken and egg in a sex cult Just that's so weird here. um if now, he now earnestly bears. <laughs> meant it as a self-help thing yeah and then he figured out it was bringing him all of these vulnerable and easily manipulated people mm-hmm. That it was sort of like a power corrupts thing that he saw. It's just self help for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh huh. And what would help him the most is having unlimited access to ladies he wants to have sex with. Yes. Apparently. Even ones that were in, oh, okay, the first season, second season were okay, good uh, TV shows. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's such a weird, because she, she would never be somebody, like, if you really thought of her. Which it's not like she's around in a lot of mm. stuff now. I guess she's been busy, but um, she doesn't seem like it. She's not like Pazla Huerta. She doesn't seem like she's a train wreck. Mm. Um, but she even was almost trying to get Carson Crooken. Like, yeah, which is so crazy. She yeah. must have believed some of the stuff that was going on. She as really well. must have. Like, I, I think that's. I want to hear at what angle that was. Like, how she was someone that was drawn into that uh, yeah. Carson Crook. You know. You just think she's like a nice, yeah. intelligent lady, and then you hear she was, you know, almost swallowed up by a sex cult. Yeah, it's quite weird. It's I mean, I don't know. It sounds like the actual sex part of it wasn't something most people were privy to. Mm. Um, it was layered. It was like Scientology. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, exactly. The more you pay, yeah. the, the more sex you got. <laughs> yeah, the more sex all these poor women got with this one dude because <laughs> that was how it was organized. So, um, yeah. It's a weird one. German born. That's why she's a bit. Oh. <laughs> I have some Germans who might take. Name's Alison Christian. Christian Mack. Mack. German born. Chloe Sullivan. Remember that? Yeah. It was a good show. It was. I didn't watch, I didn't watch it like consecutively. Mm. I just saw some episodes of it, but I liked it. It was like the first. Um. It was kind of like what Marvel are doing now with their TV shows. Mm. It was the first time we had something on that sort of scale. Like it was sort of cool music of its time. Yeah. You know, it was like Pap Roach and all that. It had, a, yeah. Real, had yeah. a really good soundtrack. I mean, it doesn't sound good when I'm saying it, but at the time mixed with the sort of visuals and what it was about, like uh, young Superman. Yeah. You know, he's in high school and he's not figured out he's Superman yet. Yeah. And I just like the lyric. It was sort of like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Totally. That was the response mm. to Buffy, I think, was um, mm. Smallville. Yeah. It was so good. And like that, 
And then it kind of just like lost its way. I think, yeah, I didn't, I remember at a certain point watching it and it was like the fourth reveal of someone who was evil and then wasn't evil <laughs> again and then wasn't under some, I was just like, well, um, and it went for a couple of minutes, Smallville, how many seasons did it go for? And he still never figured out that he was Superman, you know, was, <laughs> that's nice. Cause you can't, how do you go back from that? Like then, um, I like as well with, I think it's similar to Buffy that a lot of the, it's almost like, um, like a mood ring, like all the ten. surrounding characters, 10 seasons. No, wait a minute. So, um, could have been how many seasons? Sorry. That's okay. Um, but yeah, like a lot of the surrounding characters are mm. quite interesting as well. And so it's, if you don't relate to the main character, there's going to be somebody you relate to, which is quite good. Yeah. I think there was 10. Wow. And those are American seasons. So that's like 200 and some odd episodes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like here where they have Holy shit. rubbishy. Holy shit. 10 Seasons. That's actually crazy. I would have not thought it was that long. From 2001 all the way through to 2011. <sighs> That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. And that guy never played wow. on anything else again. I got like a foot taller between 2001 and 2011. Tom Wheeling. He was never in anything else. No. He was totally just typecast. Yeah, he was perfect in that role. <laughs> I didn't, he was not one of my most favorite parts of it, to be honest, but. But it's about him. It is about him, <laughs> but. You know, it's like, he's just like, he's a nice guy. It's yeah. not that interesting. But you that know? is Superman though. He's it, like and that's why ultimate... Superman is one of my not most favorite superhero characters. <laughs> because he's just a nice guy. Somebody save me. Remember the theme oh, song? Yeah. So good. Yeah. It was like that's an American funny. Hollywood version of Superman. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Because it was that sort of, <laughs> was it on like the CW or something? It has that kind of feel where it's like teenagery goodness. Yeah. yeah. Do you know Kirsten Crook is Canadian? I think I knew that. No, you didn't. <laughs> she de- did. She debuted on Canadian teen drama Edgemont. 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 That sounds made up. <laughs> I like her. They all are. <laughs> made up. Yeah, but I kind of found that, oh, she's from Vancouver. Mm. The, the weird sort of thing about that show was just, as it went on, like you say, some people were revealed as bad. Yeah. And they a bunch of people revealed that they had powers. Didn't they? Yeah, they just like even what's her name, Alison Mack. Yeah, like what are she the ended odds up having of all, yeah. like having powers by the end of it? And I was like, Ugh. yeah. And they'd always have a way of explaining it, but it always felt like an afterthought. It was like, space mm. rocks, more space rocks. And the girl that played Lana Lane, Lo- Lois Lane, was an- annoying as fuck. Yes, she was really annoying. She's like spunky, and well, not that I hate spunky women, but you know, no, but like, she was like annoyingly. Erica Durance. Yeah. She's got a very shiny face. Does she? The whole cast have really small eyes, like close together. Michael Rosenbaum. He was the Lex Luthor. Yep. I quite liked him in that role. Justin Hartley, Green Arrow. Don't think I watched it when he was in it, or I don't remember him at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good cast. Anyway, <laughs> I'm digressing. <laughs> you mean reciting the cast of Smallville <laughs> is digressing? <laughs> yeah, it was... It was such a good sort of time for those shows. That was fun. I think because I was like a super sci-fi nerd at that point, I was like, this is much too mainstream for me, but well, um, I still enjoyed it a little bit. So this Sunday is going to be the return of Game of Thrones. Yes. We need to figure out our how to watch it strategy. Yeah. I mean, how do you watch it other than, is it is HBO, isn't it? Yeah. So it's hard to, I can't think of anything to say that's not going to be incriminating. <laughs> <laughs> so, We'll watch it. It'll be fine. <laughs> she she is uh, an immigrant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not an illegal one. <laughs> yes, um, um, Game of Thrones. They should really show it in cinemas. That'd be amazing. Yeah, this I is the point it. I was making. Is yeah. they should really show it in cinemas. They're completely missing out on a trick because I think so. You know, you only have a limited number of tickets. Yeah, you know, yeah. for that night it would sell out. Yeah, people would be happy to yeah. pay more to watch it on a bigger screen. I think so. And you could sell like season passes at a discounted price. Or yeah. Would you have to it would have would it be streamed? I mean would they ha- they'd the have issue? to work it out with HBO. Like they couldn't Yeah. They'd have to figure out how to do that. Yeah. Um because if it's streamed then it might be on a weird time. Yeah, I don't think they would do that. I think they'd do it like how they get movies kind of thing. <laughs> Um, we'll yeah, because if they did up. it live, it would be, yeah, that would be, although it would be a way to get people into a theater at presumably like a really weird o'clock on a Sunday. So it would be 2 a.m. 
Yeah. On a Sunday. Uh, there'll be a, uh, the episode will be simul, simul cast in the UK. Uh, yeah. For those of us Went for Monday evening where the episode the runs again at 9 p.m. Hmm. Shit. It's weird how they do that, though. Yeah. I don't know. It's almost like they want us to down. <laughs> I know. It's like the UFC. Yeah, I've exactly. talked about like this they've loads made it of times with people to watch it legally. To watch it legally yeah. and on time. And yeah. you're on time. It's just nigh on impossible. Yeah. Stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, have to go to the casino <laughs> at five o'clock in the morning. Then you have to put up with a bunch of drunk arseholes who think they're Conor McGregor. You do. I've done that one time with you, and it was certainly an <laughs> and experience. I was, I was very drunk, and I thought it was Conor McGregor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I had been working, and then went home, and then came back, and it was interesting. So it should be good. Like, um, I don't know. We've, got, we've not got many characters left. After. No, talk about a battle royale. Um, when was the first time you watched it, Game of Thrones? Ooh, I think. Did you watch it from the start? I didn't watch it quite from the start, but I started watching it. I think a fair bit of season one was already out when I right. started watching it. Okay. Um, and I think that was one of those ones where I was like, I've heard too much about this already. I'm annoyed about it. And then I was like, ah, no, I'm going to watch it. It sounds like I'd really like it, actually. Um, so what season did you start? One, like, okay. I think it was just... I Like, how many seasons had came out before you started watching I think watching just the first okay. one, yeah. Um, Man, you go back and watch those remember, first ones. They just look oh, so yeah. different. And you don't know yet what they're like, so mm. you don't expect them to, like, chop off your favorite character's head or whatever. Everyone, but they totally do. alert. If you haven't seen season one, <laughs> fuck off. That's what they all um, say. Yeah. <laughs> But no, it was it was when I was living in, I remember the house I was living in in Dublin, so it would have, I don't remember when the first season came out, but it would have been in my third or fourth year of yeah. uni that I started watching it. I put it off for the longest time watching it. I, and I think I watched the first couple of episodes when it, they initially came out, and I just couldn't, I couldn't get through it. Oh, uh, really? Even though it was something that, I love that sort of genre as well. Just looking up one at the um, And then I think when was it? It was season. How many seasons are out now? Um, this is eight, season eight that's eight coming is out. Starting, yeah. I think I started watching it just as season, season seven came out. Yeah. So in preparation for season seven coming out, I watched everything. Obviously, because okay. I'd never, never seen it before. It started in 2011, so I would have been watching it from season one, I think. 2011? It feels yeah. like it's been on since like the 80s or something. I know, right? Yeah. That's nothing, but it feels like yeah. a part of culture. I thought it would at least have been like, yeah, it really is a part of culture. It's mm. weird for something that's pretty, if you'd have told me in like 2007, like the most mainstream TV show will be something that's only on HBO <laughs> and it's swords and tits and they kill <laughs> everyone and they don't give a fuck and it's based on never-ending books written by a fat nerd with too many words in them to be honest I, someone's gonna get really George mad but R i really R R R he's an amazing storyteller but he's not a good writer yeah um i think we've had this conversation about other people like philip k dick the same thing his ideas are amazing but his writing yeah it's like the opposite, actually, of George R.R. R. Martin, because he doesn't describe <laughs> anything, whereas George R.R. R. Martin describes everything, the, but it's all the same. Was, do you know he was voted the, the Pirates' most favorite author? The Pirates? Yeah. Which Pirates? Oh, R. We're <laughs> here all night. <laughs> oh, God. Um, uh, yeah. Huh. Has, he, has he even released the last book? I don't think so. I think I, everyone's really nervous he's going to die before he dies. Yeah, because supposedly he has it in a safe somewhere, or at least an idea for the script, or the end written away somewhere in case yeah. he dies, and then they can finish the show. Because he does look like, if nothing else, a good candidate for congestive heart Imagine failure. Imagine the pressure of trying to keep up with the show as well. Like You've released a series <sighs> of books that's yeah. like, superseded you, like transcended you. It's its own yeah. thing, and then eventually you're just having to... Like, You'd feel like you're not working for yourself. Like you'd have to yeah. work for this show. And I feel because it does diverge a fair bit in certain places. And as I understand it, it would be very weird to feel like you were like being influenced mm. by the show, which while they're your characters and your stories, they've really taken on a life of their own yeah. in a lot of ways. I mean, like authors don't even get to pick what book covers they're using or whatever, let alone like who's cast in their 
you know, TV show necessarily. Um, so it'd be weird if it really changed the way that you, mm. like if you were trying to ignore the show or yeah. like work with the show, like what would you do? It's a weird thing. And then you've got so many people just like, I'm sure every time fans see him, they're like, when's the book coming out? Um, you probably just have to like put your hand up and stay away from it. Yeah. You know, just keep, keep in that writing track, which is hard to do when you've created one of the most like amazing stories for yeah. people that turned into a TV show eventually. Yeah. I wonder how long they'd been out or how many books had been out prior to the TV show coming around. Good question. Mm. I don't know. Someone will obviously know and be listening to this and be like, you idiots. <sighs> but man, I, I can't wait for it to come out. It's just, yeah, I'm excited. Like it's just been getting better and yeah. better as well. Like even in terms of like, that's what's the funny thing about the first episode is it's not cinematic in any yeah, way. Yeah, like the production values are like, it's like you can see how cardboard everything it's like, is. It's like a yeah. mythological neighbors. You mm-hmm. know, it's like a fantasy neighbors. It is, yeah. And like the wigs are awful and it's just like. And then it got like more and more. It's just so good. Yeah, no, it's just, and it's so like, I think that it's done a really good job of working with its audience's expectations yeah. in terms of when it's shocked us. And then it must be so hard to make something like that like movies even let alone tv series where you get this constant feedback but in the internet age you can get just constant yeah. feedback from the people watching the show about what they've thought of the show yeah and that must be another one that it's really hard to know how much to be influenced by it one of the hardest like videos to watch was like a live stream of the episode where you find out why hodor is called hodor oh no um and it's all these people in bars in America or sitting at home. And it's this scene where he's running through the ice cave and then he's trying to hold the door, obviously. Yeah. And people are just like breaking down. Like, it's guys, so sad. I can't grown be... men watching this yeah. episode of, and just crying over it's this. It's really sad. It's, it's such a, oh, I couldn't believe it. It was a good episode. It was. But that's what, like, I've rewatched most of them, but mm. I can't really rewatch that. I think I rewatched some of it and turned it off because I was just like, I don't want to feel the feelings again. It's one of those things, you know, in TV and movies especially, there's a tendency for people wanting to get explanation for things. You know, there was yeah. the whole uproar about The Last Jedi, or was it The Return? No. Sorry, I'm Some talking, of the Jedi talking about ours. The, <laughs> this, the latest uh, Star Wars movie that yes, came out. Yes, that one. Um, I can't I even remember. remember the name. That's how much I hate <laughs> it. Just mad libs. But... <laughs> essentially people thought and i was on the same bandwagon as this that the director just completely ruined the momentum of the first one didn't yeah. explain anything from it you know we had so many conspiracy theories going around about yeah. what was going to happen you know and who's who and what's the lineage of certain people in it and yeah and snoke and all this thing so people want uh to be told yeah or do they really you know because if they get did get told does it coincide with what they think yeah because i might find out they're wrong and that's potentially equally upsetting i remember that one at the same time the hodor one was not one that i ever thought that i wanted explained but it was one of the most powerful explanations i've watched of something like that yeah that's when it's really satisfying is something you didn't realize was a loose end gets like pieced in for you and you're like that's why because <laughs> I, I think it's yeah yeah because you you don't you don't run the risk of being wrong basically because yeah. you haven't thought of it so it's very satisfying it totally takes you by surprise you're like no way this is where he yeah. gets his fucking name from and then it makes everything like it enhances the smartness of the mm. whole thing because you're like oh there must be explanations for everything <laughs> um yeah but is there anything that's sort of like a big what what are your sort of questions leading into this episode? Uh, this season? Well, I guess there are... Are, are, are George Martin? It's not because it's all questions at this point. Yeah. It's like, what's going to happen, basically? I think that's the overarching yeah. question is yeah. what the fuck is going to happen? Yeah. I mean, like, it's all kill or be killed stuff at this point, mm. I guess. It's like, there's no... Who's going to survive? Yeah, exactly. I can't imagine an ending where... Essentially, it's a battle royale for the characters. It is, you know? yeah. And then there's like... And because we know that the showrunners are just willing to be absolute bastards, like, mm. everyone could die. <laughs> it could just be that the White Walkers yeah. take over. Like, it could be that, or... I mean, who knows? Um, that was a great thing about the show there. Like, they just 
were willing to, I mean, I, I take it it comes from the books, mm-hmm. but they were willing to just kill off people's best love Yeah, just stab characters. your heart in the face. Yeah. Yeah, and they, and they show you the knife really, mm. I mean, they sort of hold back at the first season and then they prove. The end of that last Yeah, season. that they're just like. Like when Ned gets Nope, sizzled. we're going to do whatever we want. Yeah. Ned or Regions chopped off. Yeah. <laughs> His, his head yeah yes. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that like you know no one's safe basically um it's a weird one yeah uh, they Le- even killed a dragon i know that episode one of my favorite ones is the the episode where the the, is it the night king no what's his name the cult the king yeah, the Night King. The Night yeah. King when he, he throws a spear yeah. at the dragon and it falls into the water. It's amazing. You're like, that unreal. can't happen. You just think they're like a MacGuffin, like they're gonna That was another one like there's there's something about the way they shot it and showed him walking over to the spear and you're like Yeah, you're like, No, no. I'm actually getting chills talking about it. It's, it's really like, crazy. No Yeah. No fucking way is yeah. he gonna take down that dragon with a fucking magical spear. Yeah, like they're dragons, they're invulnerable. <laughs> they're yeah. They're invisible. Yeah. <laughs> Inv- <laughs> invisible? Impregnable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> Those were boys. <laughs> Boy dragons. Um dragons. But my favorite episode so far has been the hard home one, the one where John is with the wildlings in their kind of camp by the water and they get like overrun by the white walkers. And it's like with the giant in it. Uh, yes. That was a great episode. I love it. Cause it's like the pace of it and the menace of it. It's like. Same with the battle of the bastards as well. Yeah. Yeah, It's so good. Both of those to be prove what you can do if you make like a TV show sized movie because that sense of like build up, I don't think you could accomplish it in a movie. No. But in the space of like an hour, it's just right to be able, it's like writing an essay that's like 1500 words as opposed to like 5,000 words. Like right. you can just keep it all together. I have done one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, because you can, pair back everything yeah. and just have it all take place in the same time in the same place and you can manage the pace of it and that sense of like in hard home the sense of anxiety building yeah. up yeah um it's just i don't know it's fantastic it just knocked my little uh, socks has off has it won any awards oh i'm sure it's won like emmys and Shit like that. Um, I wonder if we'll have to change the structure of award shows because of these types of things that are coming out. Because yeah, like the Netflix thing with the Oscars. Yeah. Um, um, and like Game of Thrones is essentially like a massive movie. Yeah. That's yeah. A, like what should the it story, win? You yeah. Know, what should it be seen as something that's uh, an eligible uh, recipient of some of these prizes or whatever? Not prize, but like yeah. The, Got some Golden Globes. We got some Emmys. Unsurprisingly, Jon Snow won a Ginger Girlfriend of the Year. You Ginger Girlfriend, dump me. He dumped me. Dump me. Me Ginger I Girlfriend. How their wedding allowed a bunch of North Americans to try to figure out what Land Rovers meant to <laughs> British people. Who's wedding? Um, Jon Snow and uh, what's her name? There's, Rose Leslie. There's no Land Rovers in. Uh, Game of Thrones. No, in real life, in ah, their actual wedding. Yes. Yes. You're assuming everyone knows that they're married, or where they got married. I just said wedding. <laughs> That's a good clue. Um, but yeah, <laughs> she's from a Scottish family. He's from down south, I yes. think. Ironically, yes. Um, and Way. they got married. The and king of the north. What people from North America didn't know is that posh Scottish people are obsessed with Land Rovers, <laughs> and everyone was like, teepees "Why are they in a well. Land Rover and teepees and Scottish castles and Scottish castles?" And Especially get, if you live in one, getting pissed at the expense of Scottish people. Mm, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Bloody really English that, coming yeah. north of the wall. <laughs> north of the wall. <laughs> I seen a hilarious video. You've probably seen the guy that does the impressions of Jon Snow. It's an English guy. He does a bunch of them. I don't think so. He usually does him, but he also does one where he, he pretends to be Jon Snow and calls up a builder's merchant and is asking for like a thousand bags of concrete to build the wall. <laughs> and there are loads of cement. I was like, is this Donald balls. Trump? <laughs> And it, <laughs> it's hilarious. I'll have to look that up. That sounds funny. <laughs> I don't know the guy's name, but it's awesome. It's on YouTube. Just search. Cool. I will. John Snow calls builders, suppliers, or merchants. 
<laughs> cool. I will. Build the wall. But not now, because that would be rude. Yes. Yes. Um, so another um, thing that I want to talk to you about, and it's very, yes. su- very supremely, supremely important. You know mm-hmm. how you sort of talk about this and rank every one of these is probably going to how I'm going to judge you for the rest of oh, the, the time we're together for a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm starting with a pretty low bar. <laughs> That's all it is. But and so I, I saw an article that essentially ranked all of the Star uh, Trek TV shows. Oh. From like number seven all the way through to number one. Oh. Um, and my, I, I went through mine. So, like, number seven, I thought the, the newest series, not sure what the name of it is. We haven't seen any of it, have we? I've watched a couple of episodes. Oh, okay, without me? Yes. It's not not good. Okay. Uh, number six for me is the animated series. I also haven't seen any of that. Which comes from, like, this, this 60s or 70s. Hmm. Let's yeah, see. I haven't really seen any of that. It, name, namely, these ones are lower because I've pretty much not watched, not watched them. Yeah, really. cool. That's, that's all it really is. Number five is uh, Enterprise. Okay, yeah. I did. I did like Enterprise, mm-hmm. but I just didn't think it was uh, didn't go anywhere. I don't like the captain in it. Yeah. Oh, the guy from Scott uh, Bakula. He's, he's, got, <laughs> he's like an off-brand Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> he's an off-brand. <laughs> uh. Shaking back. Uh, so Deep Space Nine comes in at four. Mm-hmm. Although I think it would have been a bit higher if it wasn't for these other last three of them. That's how lists work. <laughs> I know, but I did love Deep Space okay, Nine. Fair enough. I got you. I got your meaning. Like most of the top four are on par for me. So mm-hmm. essentially just be, you know, four of them are all in the same par for me. And then mm-hmm. the last three are like Enterprise and cool. series. But um, yeah, Deep Space Nine, loved it. Yes. Number four. Number three, original series. Mm-hmm. You know the one from yes, there? Yes, of course. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two mm-hmm. for me has to be Voyager. Mm-hmm. Although I, I wanted to put it number one. It was so hard for me oh, not to put it number one. Because okay. it was the one that I watched a lot of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Captain yeah. Janeway. <laughs> Didn't have a crush on her. She was like a teacher. She's, to me. Yeah, totally. Yeah, completely. <laughs> she taught me how to drive my first spaceship. Um, <laughs> and for number one is uh, Star Trek Next Generation. Yup. That makes sense. Yes. Mine's similar, but a few changes. Okay. Cool. So I'll be the for the seven and six the same as you because I haven't really seen either of the new one, which I forget the name of even, or... I just put new series in the list. <laughs> yeah. Um, like as... I need like a pen and paper. I need to. So that's. So we've got four to. So the newest series is number seven. Yeah. And um, then animated series. Those I'll, are tied, I'll, I'll show you the list that yeah, I have. Yeah, that would be helpful. Sort of okay, like... cool. So I agree there. Um, uh, I think. See, I, I really liked a few episodes of Enterprise. I like when they kind of revisit the eugenics people. But other than that, I haven't seen that many of them yeah. again. Animated series you've not watched. I haven't watched it all. Yeah. Um, yeah, neither the newest season or the animated series. I haven't seen any of them. So those don't really count. So we're kind of starting <laughs> from five. Um, I'm going to leave the list as it is. I'm going to say Enterprise is fifth. Yeah, I like a lot of the side characters, but I really don't like the captain. In, I like their translator and I like their Vulcan. And Deep Space Nine. In Enterprise. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Deep Space Nine is still going to be fourth. It's just very like Vaseline lensy, and right. then there is there was a weird sort of like it's very like Babylon yeah. Five. No, totally. And, like, yeah, I used to get those mixed up. Yeah. initially, and I was like Babylon Five. This is just Deep Space Nine. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, yeah. I really like some of the characters again, but other ones I don't really like mm. that much. I like the idea of being on a space station. But it's sort of the same problem we're going to get to with Voyager, where they just run out of room to do stuff at a certain point, and then it starts getting weird. They don't run out of stuff to do in Voyager. They'd love the Terrorism. holodeck, though. They're always in the bloody holodeck. Anyway. Wouldn't you um, spend all of your time in the holodeck? Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's good television. <laughs> um, okay, so DC's 9-4. I'm going to actually say Voyager 3. Oh. 
I still really like it. I really like the majority of characters in that, but, and I like the sense of a journey. Like it's like the Odyssey. That's really cool. But honestly, the holodeck stuff, it's too much. And I get annoyed with it because it's like, oh, but we're in Next London in 1899 or something. No, that was Generation that did all that. Oh, I don't remember. The whole, <laughs> okay. The, the holodeck, you know, they were like, did like uh, Sherlock Holmes and all this they type did, of but thing. They, I think they both. Data would yeah. be like fucking, you that know. That was funny though. would always be someone um, supremely quirky. So then I'm going to say. I don't say, understand, Captain. Oh, this, this, <laughs> I'm going to say Generation second. And for me, the original series is first. Always going to top out number one for you, is it? Yeah. Really? It is, yeah, because I guess the same with you and some of your top ones, but it's the one I saw when I was a kid. I've yeah. seen every single episode of it. Um, obviously, it's like kitschy and goofy and ridiculous, but it just has that like wonderful purity to it mm. that I really like. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm gonna have to go original series first, and it has my favorite, which is Space Seed, because um, <laughs> I just love. Space um, Seed. The the one with Khan. Oh yeah. That okay, turned yeah. into the Wrath of Khan. Um which is literally just like a seed that spawned a movie. It is, yeah, yeah. except it works. And it has you can plot my psyche between these two poles being Space Seed at one end and the trouble with Tribbles at the other end. Those are my two <laughs> favorite things in the world. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's me. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> Is there any like episode? Well, yeah, that's the episodes that stand out for you. Yeah, is the triple triple one. The triple one's just so funny, but Space Seed is like that to me is like a whole movie mm. in an episode, and it's like when they hadn't even figured out TV yet, and it's amazing they managed yeah. to do that, like to create such a strong and magnetic character in one episode is very impressive. I think for me, the the reason I love Next Generation is along those lines. And, I, and that was when I had started to watch it properly was that mm -hmm. C, uh, series. Yeah. And then from hindsight, I went and like watched mm -hmm. the, the original yeah. ones. But that one's always got a place in my heart. That'll always yeah. be number one. Mm -hmm. No, I think, it, I think and, it's probably objectively the best, mm. but it's my second favorite because I have a childhood <laughs> love for the original. Yeah. And uh, Q. Like all yeah. the stuff with kids, mm -hmm. some of my favorite storylines and all of it. You yeah. Know, there's so much overarching stuff in it. It's very like good storytelling. Yeah. They're good at weaving that in, mm -hmm. like at having like themes or movements, but then it all works as standalone as well. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good TV. Good characters again as well. Anyway, I think on that note, we're probably bored people with Star Trek talk. Oh, really? You don't think our Star Trek talk is fascinating? No. I mean, I love it, but. Me too. Well, we'll finish this later on yeah. there. We're going to get in we're a, talk a about wrestling the holodeck. match. We're going to sort this out. Wrestle you for the holiday. <laughs> anyway, well, thanks for coming on again. Well, my as pleasure. Always.